So today we're gonna be installing the Heat Demon heated hand grips. The number on these is 215047. It's got the five levels of heat. And we'll go ahead and get them installed. And now we're going to show you the unboxing no. what's inside of it before we install these bad boys. The controller module. The heated thumb, some hardware to mount it, and a piece of shrink wrap. Okay. Now we're gonna get to take us off apart. Now we're gonna remove the covers on the front to access the fuse box. Pull up and push forward. The gray one, you just pull up on it. And put them to the side. And now we're going to remove the two pot rivets to remove the cluster to make it easier to run your wires from the handlebars down to the fuse box. What time is it? Because yours, yours are, you know. Pull back, push up. Push forward. That's all we need. Now. now we're going to remove the T6 Allen key, 6 millimeter, yep. from the hand card. Once you do that, there's a washer and it'll be have a flex in it. And that's the flex. You want the flex to face inside when you put it back on. Now we're going to do the other side, the same. the same. Now we're going to remove the factory hand grips without damaging them so that we can reuse them if we want to later. What you do is you push this up, you get an air compressor, you stick it inside of there, and you blow it with air and pull back. That's that one, we'll do the other side. All right, now we're gonna do the right side, same thing. That's it. Okay, so now we're gonna put the washer we took off on the new heated hand grip. This is only gonna apply if you have the hand guards on your unit. You're gonna drill it in. Just clean it out a little. Now you get a knife and you just clean it out a little. Now we're going to set the handlebars on loosely. Ooh, now you're going to take the washer and stick it back where you got Between it from. Between the hand guards. Between the hand guards. You can just say the rest of it. Put your bolt through it. And then we're going to bolt it in here. Now you readjust your hand guards. We secure the bolt. Go tight. We secure the bolt so that they're tight. All right. All right. When you're tightening this, just snug it back up almost to this. You don't have to kill it because you'll strip it probably. So that's what it looks like when it's back on on that side. Now we'll do the other side. Now you're going to do the same thing to the other one. Now 
you're going to clean it out a little bit with a knife. It's not perfect, but enough to get your bolt through. I don't know what you cut rubber with to get a perfect circle, but apparently it's not a drill bit. Now you're going to slide the other heated hand grip on. Going to install the washer. And the bolt. Okay, if they don't spin easily, you just loosen this up a tiny bit and you can spin it to where you want it. So that this cable is where you want it. That's gonna run down to inside the fuse box. And then once you get it where you want it, you can re-secure it. And that'll be on both sides the same. Make sure you run it the way you want it, out of the way of anything that could get caught in it. And we'll get a picture of that once we, uh, once we get them all routed for the final, we'll get a better shot of it, how we ran them. Now we're gonna remove the factory strap to wrap the wires inside of it. And then through the hooks. Maybe I should have taken it from that angle, but just out of your way. And just do that. We'll get an uh, opposite angle on the other side. Now you're gonna undo the opposite side. Stick the wire in. Put the wire in. Run it down through here and pull it out. Okay, you can pause it. Don't be like us and forget that you have to run the module and the thumb warmer. If you got the thumb warmer, you could have done it all at the same time, but we'll do it now. I'm just going to so reopen we, it. We're just going to reopen it because we could have done it all at the same time. This is for the module to turn them on and off to control the settings and for the heated thumb warmer. Okay. And we're gonna run the yeah, so before. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna run everything through the hook also. are the ends that are going to connect everything together. There's three of them since we got a thumb warmer. You don't have to run them through here. I'm going to run them through here so they look a little nicer. Some of the pull some of the length out of it if you want. If not, to make all your final adjustments, then do this last. And now we're gonna adjust it up top. We're gonna mount the module and we'll be right back. Now, if you're gonna mount it like they recommend and like we did, 
what you would do is you would remove this bolt. Every that'll loosen, but it's not going to fall off. So we'll get this all the way out and we'll be right back. So the bolt they give you to use is the same thread, same, same Allen key size, and it's a lot longer. So to make up for that space, what we did is uh, we put the bolt, put the bolt through this piece, this bracket they give you. We put the spacer on the back of it. And then we're gonna rescrew it in there and we'll be back. Okay, we'll be mounting it, mounting it like this. The bolt, the bracket, and then the spacer. And we're just gonna remount it back inside where the other bolt was. And tighten it up. Yeah, put that back on the same spot. If you're like us, you'll have to re-level your your uh, brake reservoir and brake handle. Put it right there. We want this to be almost like a 90 degree, I guess. Then we're gonna tighten it. I'm gonna hold it. Oh, let me go out. I'll loosen it a little bit so I can get it all the way out. Okay. You don't have to kill it, just get it tight. Then next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna install. Uh, we're gonna hook it up to here, and this is gonna go like this and like this. So what we'll be doing is we'll be putting that Allen key bolt through a washer through the back of the bolt surface place. Then we'll be putting a uh, lock washer on, a flat washer. Actually, a lock washer. And we'll make sure it's mounted the right way, of course. So you gotta switch sides. That's how we're gonna do it. You can mount it either way you want. Then we're gonna put it through through the bracket hole and put the lock washer on it so it doesn't fall. Flat washer. And this little nylon nut. And as soon as I get it on, I'll be right back. Okay, we pushed it on like that, put everything on, and then we got the nylon nut started. Now what we're gonna do is use this three millimeter Allen key again. We're gonna hold, put it in the hole, and we're gonna use a pair of angled beetle nose. We're gonna hold the bolt in the back Put it about where we want it. And we're gonna tighten it up using the Allen key. Just holding it with the just holding it with the uh needle nose. Is that where you want it? Something like that. Oh, this is fine. Okay, we're just getting on flat spots on the back so it stops. So we want it? Okay, we tighten it in place. 
to where she wanted it. Everything's all tight and secure. Now we're gonna start adjusting the grips and running the wire. Hold on. We did a slight adjustment just so the control is a little bit tilted up. Tilted up, easier to see. All right. All right, now we ran our wire back here and we're gonna wire tie it right here as close as we can. But before we do that, we're gonna make sure that there's a little bit of slack to account for any kind of stretch because you don't want to, to stretch it. You don't want to pull the element apart inside of the actual grip. So what we're gonna do is put a little bit of slack like so, then run a wire tie. You don't go crazy on the wire tie. Just do it so it's snug, it's not gonna move. And then you also wanna check your throttle, make sure it's not interfering with your throttle. And once you do that, we can cut the bottom of the wire tie. We'll cut the bottom of the wire tie off. It's, it's just snug, it's not tight, super tight. So we're just snug so that it won't move. I'm trying to get it there. You don't need it. It's not That's a big right. deal. Just cutting the wire tie bottom. And then after you do that, the hand grip's in the correct spot. We're gonna tighten, we're gonna tighten this Allen key, which is the same one, uh, three millimeter. We're gonna tighten the hand grip. Just till it snugs up. You don't have to kill it. Just till it stops turning by uh just one finger, two fingers being used. You don't need to go crazy tight. Okay, and like that, this one is just about done. There we, a little bit more. All right, and it's not moving anymore. It's gonna get a tiny bit quarter. And there it goes. That one's all tight and secure. You gotta run the wires down still, but for this, this side's all done up here, with the exception of the mounting of the thumb th of the throttle uh, heater. We'll do that next. Now we're using um, isopropylene alcohol. We're gonna just put some on the rag. And we're gonna clean the mounting surface of the thumb warmer. Get all the oils off of it. Now here's our thumb warmer. You gotta peel the back of it off. And we're gonna stick it right on the thumb warmer. Get it on there nice and tight. Get the whole thing as much as possible covered. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide, we're gonna slide the heat shrink that came with it over it. Oh, damn. Okay, you got it on, you got a mount. Now we're gonna use a heat gun. We're just gonna heat it up.
Okay, we burned that pretty good. Now that's nice and good. The way uh, the way the boss wanted it, she wanted to make sure she used all of the heat shrink on hers. Now we have the wires. We're just gonna adjust them a tiny bit. Put a little bit of slack in them. And then we're gonna wire tie it up here. Right here, right in front of the reservoir, we're gonna add a wire tie, making sure they're slack in both of them. And I'll be right back once I get that wire now tie. Make sure on. you put a little bit of slack right here and run the tiny wire tie that comes in the kit. I put that one right there so that nothing gets ripped out when you throttle it. Put a tiny bit of slack in it. Get on the inside. And we're gonna cut them, cut the wire ties, cut the piece of extra access off. Off. And one more. Can I see that one? No. Just cut it off, they'll know. Mm -hmm. Alright. Make sure our throttle's moving like it should. It's not binding. It's, it's able to go full throttle. If you look down there, it's not, nothing's pulling. I wanna cut this off. It's gonna bother me. Get some more cars. All right. All right, so that's done. Now we're gonna move on to the other side. Okay, now the wire on the left-hand side, you're gonna to wanna to put a little bit of slack in that also. And if you have a CF Moto, it has the throttle override for when you're in a diff lock. You push this in and it'll allow you to override the throttle. Um, I've never used it and don't really plan on using it. Might, uh, might break something a whole lot easier, especially if there's like a wood or something or tree or something underneath where you're stuck and you can't see it. So now we're just gonna leave a little bit of slack in this. And we're just gonna snug this one up also, like we did the other one. And as soon as I get everything where I want it, I'll do that. And you just make these snug. You don't wanna pinch the wire too bad or at all. Now we're just gonna cut the excess off. like that we got a little bit of slack this side's not going to really move you just want a little bit of slack so it's not stretching it every all the time then we're going to adjust the cables going down pull them out because we got everything where we want it move the heat gun because we're almost done with that and pause it. now we got all the wires ran down the way we wanted to out of the way kind of now we're gonna pass them underneath here and into where the area of the fuse panel. And I'll be back with you once I get them on that side. Okay, now we got all the wires through underneath. And now we're just gonna start connecting them. Female to male, all the way across. So you got three males and three females. So we'll do that and then uh, I'll get right back to you as soon as I'm done. All right, now we have them all connected. And that's where we are. Now we're gonna push it back underneath so it leaves some slack in it. So we're just gonna shove them back under here, give it a tiny bit of slack. So we're gonna end up doing, so we're gonna end up tapping these wires to a fuse tap. And uh, only reason I'm tapping these to a fuse tap is because if you accidentally leave them on, 
it's going to uh, it's going to drain your battery probably pretty fast. And the other thing is, is a fuse tap. It just adds. It just allows you to add a fuse. So one fuse will be the original fuse that was in there. The second fuse is just exactly what it is. It's just a tap. So they're separated. So this this won't interfere with the fuses with the fuse that's we're, that we're running a fuse tap off of. It's not gonna blow the fuse for the heater and blow the uh, and blow the original fuse. They will blow different. So. Um, but even at that, I would still use one that is not too important and, uh, we'll take the fuse cover off at this point. Now we're going to remove this fill up head. And this fill up head. That's going to let the fuse box to be moved a little bit more, make it easier to access these red things. You push them down and then push in these two black tabs on the top part and it separates it. And then the fuse that I used, you can use whatever you want. Uh, I'm going to use the lamp fuse, and that's going to turn off the dash lamps. Uh, that's what that one's going to do. Uh, and oh, it'll turn off your daytime running lights. I, I think that's all it does. So we're going to tap into there, and I'm going to get a fuse tap, and I'm going to show you how I do that. Okay, now we'll be uh, removing this 15 amp fuse. Here's what your fuse tap looks like. The bottom one is for the existing fuse that's there for that circuit. The top one is for the circuit we're gonna add and they are separated. So what we're gonna do now is, we're gonna do now is we're going to place the fuse tap right inside of there. We're going to take this, it comes with this on there. We're going to cut that off as close as we can to the actual wire. Then we're going to strip it. What we're going to use to put a connector on. We're going to use about that much wire. Then what we're going to do is we're going to then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to run this through one of these T's holes this is an unused fuel term uh unused fuse terminal and we're gonna stick our hand on the bottom of it okay now the wire comes out and if you put your hand underneath you'll get this this is a plug that they put in from the factory for the unused uh unused wire terminals we're gonna save it and then after that we're gonna fix our wire i'm gonna put it in a heat shrink connector and then we're gonna get our clean you don't have to use it. You can use any tool crimper. I just use these because it's the same pressure all the time. And you can adjust the pressure to your liking. And it's a it's a Klein tool. 3005CR. And then it says HO8 on the bottom of it. 
to get those from? I got those from Menards you or Home Depot or I don't know. Menards probably. I think they were part of Home Depot. Oh, they were Home Depot actually. You just put it on there, you push down, you squeeze it, it gives you the same cramp on all your cramps every time. And uh, it's adjustable right here. You loosen that screw, you spin it. The silver screw, you loosen it, you spin it one way, it loosens it, the other way it tightens your cramp. And then you don't want to go too tight because it'll cut your cramp. Okay, so now we got that. So now our red wire, I'm just going to leave it this long. I don't know. Um, I guess I could cut it, but I'm not going to. <clears throat> so I'm going to cut this off because it's all twisted. I'm going gonna, gonna to cut that much off because I'm going to fold it over. Then I'm going to stick it in this hole and we're going to crimp it again. Okay, now that's good. Tug on it, make sure everything's good. Now we're gonna use a heat gun to heat shrink it. There it goes, closing up. I really think it's worth investing in a heat gun, so we better be using them later. What year, Greg? Okay, so that's tight. Now I need a ground. And I don't want to put a terminal on it because I got enough terminals. Dude, you're just gonna, man, I should really cut that and fix it. Huh. All right, so now we're gonna, we're gonna get the soldering iron ready and I'll be right back. Now I gotta fix these wires because they were tangled. I didn't realize it, I guess, when I did my turn signals. So now I'm gonna tend these wires as soon as it gets hot enough. Dude. I do have another heavy duty soldering gun. I just don't have it outside. It's in my RC bag. No, I know. All right, we tend that one. That was a bad one, but it'll work. And then hold this one. And now we're going to tend this one. Now it's really hot. All right, that one's tend. Now we're gonna we're gonna get, hold on. I'm gonna put a piece of heat shrink on these two sides. We're gonna connect. This is our uh, ground from our uh, our demon hand grips, and this is our hot from our demon hand grips. So the 
hot is already, or the B plus is already connected to the fuse, but there's no fuse, so there's no power coming in there yet. Now, our ground, I'm gonna hook it to another existing ground I had that was tangled. I cut it, tinned it, and now I'm gonna fuse the Demon Grip one with my original ground. And I did put a piece of heat shrink before it because I will be using a piece of heat shrink to cover it. Now I'm gonna tend these two together. Wait, hold on. Here, put this. Just so they get close together, I guess. It doesn't really matter. They're gonna fuse together in a minute. Okay, now we're just gonna... All right, put it on there for me. Just touch them. It should fuse them together. Now move it. There. Those two are fused together just like that. You pause it. Yeah. Now we're gonna solder them all together. And I need help for that, so everybody's helping. Okay. Wait, hold on, my hands are gonna get burned. Hold on, let me try to get these. You see, I'm gonna try to wrap. I just thought I was a pain in the ass. All right, now we're gonna solder these all together. Hit them, just let it get a little hot. Move it back and forth, back and forth. There, let go, let go. Okay, they're all together, I'm gonna pull on them. It's pretty solid, it's not the prettiest, but I can't do it because I can't do all Grab all three, so we're gonna try to clean it up some. Do me a favor, Dominica. Mm -hmm. No. Here, I gotta do the work this. Hold that side of the wire. All right, we're gonna try to fix this solder job. Yeah, that's good. All right, let go. And oh, unplug that for me. Yep. Okay, that's, that's really pretty good. I mean, it's gonna take a lot to get it apart. Now we're gonna put heat shrink over it that we already put on, and we're gonna heat it with the heat gun. All right, now, all right, now we're using the heat gun just to heat it up. Put the heat shrink on it, keep it from arcing on anything. You can use liquid tape too, if you want it to. I have some, I just rather use heat shrink since I had to cut all the wires anyway to fix it. Now that that's done, I'm going to put the two wires for the heat demons. I'm going to run them underneath. Ah, oh, I can. Run them underneath because there's a little hole, a little gap between the thing. I'm going to pull them up like this. And then I'm going to put them together. With a wire tie.
so hard to be really neat inside this little confined space. And then we're gonna screw the top back down and I'll come back to you after I put this screw and this screw in. Mm -hmm. So now we put the bolts back in. Every All of our wires are connected. Now we're gonna add a fuse. It's a uh, 40 amp. Uh, so it needs a five amp fuse. And a five amp fuse is a little bit bigger than you actually need, but not by much. So we're gonna put the fuse in. Okay, got that fuse in, and now we need our original uh, 10 amp fuse. Pause it. So the 5 amp fuse will be for the heat demons, and we'll put the 15 amp fuse back in for the lights. They're a little tight. God. Now we'll plug it in. And we're gonna replace the top on it, on the fuse box. Resecure the, with the red snaps to lock it in. And it's locked in. Now we're gonna put the covers back on it. We're kinda dangerous, so we're not testing it until Get all the covers back on. So. Put the covers on it. Okay. I'll re secure the driver's information center on it, or whatever you want to call it. Now we will let you guys see how hot it is. So now it has no power to it. The hand grips are at, so can you see the 69, 67? Okay, and then this side. Wait, you gotta get the back of the. Oh. 64, and the thumb grip. Uh, 66, 65. 65. Okay, now we're, uh, we'll just turn the key on. We'll turn them on. We'll go to high power. And you can see right here, it's 2.32 a.m. in the morning, 2.33. We'll be back in five minutes to see how hot they got. So it's been roughly about nine minutes. Can I have the heat gun? Here, you shoot it and I'll take it because which one we doing? The right handle. 125. The thumb throttle. About 71, 72 degrees. I'll go in the middle. I, I just got it at like 80 something, but maybe. It's pretty hot to touch it. This is on the highest setting. Yeah, I can tell you with gloves, without gloves, you're not gonna be able to use it because uh, it's gonna burn your finger. It's uh, depending on where on you're sitting 40 and 40, depending on where you're hitting on it. So they should be pretty warm. <laughs> they feel nice and toasty and that's on the highest setting. 
bare hands, it'll be pretty hot, so I'll have to try these suckers out. I'll be wearing gloves anyway. I'll put on this in the uh, The display, you can select, say this is the grips, and you select what power setting you want without knowing how it's going to be in the thumb, same way. And they're both working at the same time. They're both working at the same time. Then when you power it off and power it back on, it remembers the last setting. So if you rode with it on five, it's going to start back up on five. And then I guess, you know, when you ride through the season that you don't need them, you just will power it off. But here in Minnesota, it's pretty cold. I'll try these out tomorrow. We'll list the tools that we need. Let's see how things, so that's the installation. Thanks for watching. Uh, All right, so just a little last minute reminder, if you have a uh, CF Moto with the hand guards, you have to tighten the bolts on either side. That one's a little different. I'm waiting for them to get my one fell out. Waiting for them to get it from the CF Moto. So just a little note in there to tighten those. We'll do an updated video once we <coughs> test these bad boys out. They're definitely hot. Definitely be good for cold Minnesota days. So we'll get back with an updated video on our thoughts on these and try them out tomorrow. Okay, so the hand warmers have been on since 233. We have 12.2 volts. That's with it not being started. So I'm going to start it up. Nothing's going to bounce off, is it? Yeah. And turn all my lights on so you guys can see. Turn everything that you have. Turn your lights on. Rock legs.